What's up, guys? Um, welcome to Oz Supers TV. We're back. Very special guest with us today, Chris Goulding. Um, obviously, just ha just won bronze at the recent Olympics. Um, me and Hesh are big fans of his game. Obviously, I think he's a fan favorite on that Boomer squad and a fan favorite for Australian basketball fans. Um, he's obviously played a big part in leaving his footprint on Australian basketball and um, is currently a member of the Melbourne United. He spent 15 years in the NBL um, and we're excited to have him on. I want to first welcome our newest sponsor to the podcast, Step Back Australia, www.stepback.store. They come with vintage and exclusive men's apparel tailored for those who play in Australia. The young lads behind Step Back want to thank Oz Hoopers TV listeners for tuning in by offering a 15% off their complete online store with the code Oz Hoopers. That's A U S H O O P E R S. Head over to www.stepback.store. That's www.stepback.store to check out their collection. Link will be in the description of this episode and also on our Instagram. What's up, Chris? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm in hotel quarantine, so I'm as good as can be in hotel quarantine. <laughs> For sure. Um, we are so appreciative that you came on. I'm obviously a big fan um, ourselves and obviously the Australian community are big fans. Um, we know it's time consuming, so we appreciate it. First of all, are you still in shock from the Tokyo Olympics? I'm not in shock. Um, as I said, I'm in quarantine, so... It's pretty humbling. Um, they just lock you in a room and throw away the key. So I've had a heap of time to think about what's gone on the past few days. And um, I'm still on a, a bit of a high. And I think a lot of the guys are, you know, we're still hitting up the group chat and sure. um, seeing what everyone's doing. And, uh, you know, some guys are luckier than others being in the States and straight back to see their family, straight back to continue partying or whatever yeah. they want to do. Um, what's the go with that? Why are other countries not quarantining and we are? <laughs> I'm not a politician, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we'll get into your Olympic campaign. Um, first things first, um, congratulations. It's a big year for you. Um, NBL, champs, NBL champs, obviously Melbourne, um, and then a history, history making with the bronze at the Olympics. Um, how does it feel um, to be a medalist and make history in Australia? Oh, it feels great. The, um, the outpouring of support, um, you know, as soon as it happened was pretty overwhelming. Um, you know, I've done some cool things in my life where the phone blows up afterwards or the Instagram blows up, but nothing like this, you know, it, it took me days to get through just messages of support from back home and people I knew, people I didn't know, fans of opposition teams, you know, reaching out and saying, well done. So, um, we definitely felt the love from back home um, throughout the whole journey. And then it just kind of exploded once we got that medal. I could imagine. Um, I saw Andrew Gaze crying. I don't know if you saw Andrew Gaze crying after it. Um, everyone's yeah, kind of... Yeah. It was kind of cool. <laughs> Everyone thought, um, yeah, that was really cool. It was a huge part of Australian basketball, obviously, um, and a huge stepping stone in the direction we're heading. Um, what was the day in the life like during the Olympics? Um, given the whole COVID thing, um, how did it compare to Rio? Um, there wasn't too much difference uh, to Rio in regards to when you were in the village. You just had to wear a mask or wear gloves pretty much everywhere you went. So Rio, we could leave the village. You know, there was different hospitality tents set up. You could go and watch other events. Um, whereas this, you were, you know, kind of restricted to just the village and, your apartment or the apartment block that the Australian team had set up for them. Um, so all of our stuff was in the afternoon. So we, we, we trained in the afternoon. We lift weights in the afternoon to stay on the same time as when we were playing our games. So uh, mornings were a lot of coffees, a lot of just hanging around with the fellas, talking shit, um, watching other events, cheering for other athletes through the TV more coffee. Um, you know, they had a, a barista set up at the bottom of the Australian village, which the boys were just smashing. So shout out to the AOC for that. That kept us going. Um, and then once the afternoon rolled around, we, you know, we handled our business. Um, we didn't train crazy hard. We had guys that were um, playing a lot of minutes and had to rest their bodies. So 
we got in there, we got our work in, um, we got what we needed to do and straight back to bed, ready to roll for the game the next day. For sure. Um, obviously, you guys only lost one one game throughout the whole campaign, including the preseason games. Um, I just want to ask, who, who was the toughest opponent? And the easy answer might be the only team you lost to in USA, but they, I think there might be some teams out there that might might have shocked people. Yeah, I mean, I think Nigeria definitely surprised us. Um, mm. uh, we played in that that um, pre-tournament, uh, tournament, whatever, the pre-games, and, you know, they come out of the gates and smack um, USA straight up. And, you know, the, the, you look down their list and it's NBA player, NBA player, Europe, NBA. Um, so we took notice of them straight away and, um, you know, we managed to, handle our business against them in that first game but we knew come game one in Tokyo um, they were going to be tough and they were um, you know super athletic they were switching a lot of actions and you know they make you um, you know really move the ball and play together as a team and have a high assist rate to be able to get scores against them so we ground that out with them for a little bit and managed to push it push away they were great um, I mean obviously uh, USA, um, you know, when we were at our best, we, we we felt like we could beat them. We felt like we could beat them in that semi as well. But, um, you know, we turned the ball over a little bit too much. We got a little stagnant with our offense. And at the same time, as we were dropping, they were just kicking into gear. You know, they ramped their defensive intensity up a whole heap. Um, you know, they switch one through five. So every action you do, you, you, you're fighting hard to try and get an advantage. And they just so happen to have the best scorer in the world on their team as well in KD, who um, he's a fucking problem, bro. Like some of the shots he was making were, were crazy. So, um, you know, that's that's the team we lost to throughout the whole campaign. So they were, they were probably the toughest. Sure. Um, obviously, you guys beat them um, in the preseason games. Um, when you guys beat them, did that really boost up the confidence in the locker room and really um, give you guys an open mind about possibly winning gold? Yeah, I mean, our, we, we had an open mind going in. We had, we had a goal going in and, you know, times have changed with this Boomers team that, you know, we don't go into games expecting to lose. It doesn't matter who it is. And, and I think we showed that in our response to, to beating Team USA um, in the pre-games and then how we came out and, you know, executed and, and, and jumped on them at the start of the, that semi-final game. Um, so the mindset's definitely changed. No matter who we play in the world, we feel like we can win. Um, it just so happens we had a, a bad half of basketball when they had a phenomenal half of basketball. Mm. And that's how it works um, sometimes. So instead of it just being all over and you're out, you know, we had to shift our focus quickly. And, um, you know, we had, a, we had a goal that, bang, all right, we can't worry about ourselves. We can't sook and whinge and cry. It's like, new new goal new goal you know same vibes new goal we got to get that bronze medal and the guys were great and shifting their focus and attention to to doing something that hasn't been done in Aussie basketball before well for men anyway yeah some of the stuff you touched on I think was it alludes to something that I'm going to talk about now which is the the culture that I think was just displayed throughout the entire kind of all the games that I was watching anyway from a fan standpoint um, looked like it was so cohesive, like the bench, you're looking at the energy, you know, one through 15 or whoever's on the bench and guys on the floor, looked to flow and looked to gel really well. How was something like that implemented so effectively with, with so many kind of, I guess, big names and, and guys that are, you know, individually so achieved so much? Yeah, it's, um, it's something that's grown over time, definitely. Um, you know, it's not a, we're not a team like Team USA where, there's 12 guys that are available. They pick the best of them. Bang, you go and you rely on talent. You know, we, there's there's guys that have been in this uh, program since Beijing Olympics in 08. You know, Patty and Joe. Um, Delhi and Bainsey come along in London. You know, that's nine years ago now. I've been involved in the program since 2014. Um, you know, this has been a long time coming, the culture, and it's built off the fact that um, I alluded to it in an Instagram post. Like, this is just, it's done by a want to, to come and play for your country. Like, 
and when Bogues was here as well, you know, like um, whenever he wasn't injured, if he was half healthy, hand up, I'm ready to play. I want to play for my country. It's a want, the thing that happens. And, and once you have that mindset coming in, you get your guys together and it's like, all right, we're here for what's the best thing for Australian basketball. So now you have to have that same mindset going into how the team's built. And, you know, we've got guys that are playing in the NBA, guys that are playing in different um, areas of the world. But of course, they're going to play a little bit more than others. So there's no use. And I think that's something I'm really proud of is the guys from wherever they are, they come in and, hey, your role's two minutes. Like my role for the majority of this tournament was Patty Mills needs a minute and a half break. So you're going to go in there for a minute and a half just so Patty can get a break. And if, if you can keep the scoreboard ticking over, that's cool. And you know what? I'm, I'm happy to be here. I, I want to play for my country. You ask that of me, that's what I'm going to do to the best of my ability. And it's, got, it's people with that sort of mindset that builds this culture. Um, and it, it's a culture that we're a home away from home because so many guys are overseas, so many guys uh, away from their families. It's like in the off season, this is kind of what we know now. You know, we know being around each other for six, seven, eight weeks of an off season so we try and build that home away from home um, within the program. And, you know, another prime example is Delhi. You know, Delhi's been our starting point guard for forever. And we come to the biggest game in history of, of Australian men's basketball. And with the lineups and, and you know, having Matisse Thibel, it's like, hey, Delhi, I think we need to just switch some rotations here. You're probably not going to play as much. And you see Delhi just as hyped as everyone else on the bench cheering for everyone, cheering for the dude that just took his spot in the starting lineup because there's a there's a bigger picture, you know, and you wouldn't see that in many other teams. Um, you, you just don't see that very often in basketball, how people are, are selfless and genuinely care about the betterment of the team over themselves. It's That's kind of like a, you know, that's a bit of a scourge on how basketball is, you know, especially like through all the ranks. It's like people only give a fuck about themselves. Yeah. So what we've built is giving a fuck about something that's more important. And the people that come into camp and come into play in the team, um, they understand that pretty quickly. Um, a subject that I wanted to touch on, um, it kind of relates to what you were speaking about just then. Um, I don't know if you're close with him or not, but obviously before the Olympics, Ben Simmons pulled out of playing with the Boomers. Um, I know Gorge mentioned um, after the tournament, he's like, I wanted Ben, or throughout the tournament, he was like, I want Ben to come along and just experience the culture experience what we're like. Um, I know Andrew Bogut also said that um, him pulling out, if he doesn't want to play um, for his country, um, then he shouldn't be forced to. Um, what are your thoughts on the whole uh, Ben Simmons pulling out of the situation? And um, yeah. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's Ben's decision, right? It's, it's completely on Ben. You know, we're not, as I just explained, guys put their hand up. They want to come and play for this team. They sacrifice their off seasons. If someone doesn't want to do that, or there's things in their life or personal life that are more important to them at that stage, um, it's all good. You know, no one, none of us would bat an eyelid if Patty said, Hey, look, I'm tired, man. I've been doing this for 10 years. I, I need a break. I need to mentally switch off. I need to be with my family. I need to, you know, reconnect with people I haven't seen in years. No one, you know, we don't say, oh, come on, man, that's fucked up. You got to be here for us. It's like, we understand the toll that being away for however long and, you know, sacrificing your off season takes. So that's why we're appreciative of the guys that come in and, and do it year on year. Um, so, I mean, we're not in the business of recruiting people to the national team, you know, like but there'll, there'll come a time where Ben wants to play or, or maybe they doesn't, but you know, that's cool. That's on him, you know? And another thing, like people always ask me, Oh, what do you think about it? You know, I, I, I honestly don't know because I'm not someone that's in his position, you know, the weight of the world, the social media world, the, 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 um, you know, the weight that comes with having the biggest contract ever by an Australian being a franchise guy, being an all-star, 
all these things, I can't tell you what, what that does to a, you know, a, a young kid at 22 years old. So never will you hear me be like, oh, it's fucked up. Ben doesn't play for us because the dude's going through some shit. No one in the history of Australian basketball has ever gone through. And, you know, how he navigates that is completely up to him. But what I will say is whenever he puts his hand up, he will be accepted like everyone else. And, and, and I think he'd, he'd love being a part of the group. Sure. That's a good answer. Um, obviously you've got the shirt on now, Hoop City. Um, it's something that you started up. Um, do you want to give a little bit of an explanation of how that came about and um, what exactly it is um, to everyone listening? Yeah, so um, what it is, it's, um, in a, it's an elite level training facility in Melbourne, um, but it's accessible to everyone. So we wanted to build something was at the highest levels my bad. That's my um, dinner just got delivered out front yeah, of the sure. door. <laughs> Tastes like shit. I ain't going to eat it anyway. <laughs> Uber eats. Um, and we wanted to, to build something that was up here and um, available to everyone. Um, you know, right now available to everyone in Melbourne, but eventually everyone in Australia. So, you know, um, my business partners and I had this dream of fitting out a warehouse um with, with the bells and whistles, you know, we got a full court, we got two three on three courts, we got shooting bays, dribbling and agility bays, we got a full um, weights gym, um, you know, PS5s, table tennis tables, physio, we, we've got it all, man. And we're really proud of, of what we've built. And I kind of liken it to, well, there's no, there's a shortage of courts in Australia, right? It's like, if oh, you want to go sure. and shoot around, it's, it's it's tough. I, even sure. I know that as a professional, sometimes I'm like, I need to get shots. Where the fuck are you going to go? An outdoor court? <laughs> no, right? um, but I, I liken it to like when I was young, you would just go and hang out at the court or the association. You'd pay you five bucks and you'd just be there all day in the holidays. And, you know, you'd get some shots up, you'd talk shit with your boys, you'd play some ones, whatever it was. But you know, we've, we've got that environment. We've got our hangout area. We've got the PS5s. We've got everything you need to chill. But also, you can get high-level work. You can get better, you know, in the, in the times that you're on the court. So, I mean, you only need 30 minutes on, on one of our shooting stations, our guns, and, you know, your arms burn, and you got 500 reps up. Whereas if you're just milling around on a, a court by yourself, it's, it's, it's tough to get that work in. So... It's something we're really proud of. Um, we're just starting work on um, our facility in Geelong. We're going to open up there. Our plan is to go Australia-wide. But, I mean, if you haven't checked it out, if you're in Melbourne, wherever you are, um, you know, lockdowns permitting, um, come in, check it out. Because I was the kid that just loved to hoop. And when I, we opened the doors and turned the lights onto the place, like, I honestly, I, I was giddy, you know. I was taken back to when I was a kid that, you know, got to play on some of the best courts. So um, it's elite at Hoop City AU. Um, it's, it's cool, man. It's, and I'm not just saying that because I'm involved, yeah. you know, <laughs> if I was, if I was just a dude that rolled up to try and get a pop in there, I'd, I'd fucking love it as well. Yeah, for sure. I think it's definitely something Australia needed. I remember going over to the U S and I saw something um, similar, like shoot three, six, five, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, and I was like, Australia needs this, man. Like, there's not one place. Even, I don't even think there's courts to shoot some days. Like, half the courts are just closed and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's dope to see yeah. you leaving a, a bigger footprint on Australian basketball, man. For sure. Um, we want to be everywhere, man. For sure. Um, we'll skip over your early life and stuff. We'll get into your NBL and pro career. Um, you started your NBL career with the Brisbane Bullets as a DP um, back in 06. Um, yeah. How did that all happen? How did that come about? Um, and did what? how did it feel inking that first deal? <laughs> um, how it came about was like I was just playing locally in, in Brisbane and uh, I got put on the same team one night as, um, as the head coach of the Bullets at the time. And I, I was like 16, 17 and I was playing locally. And, you know, he saw something in me that I guess – a lot of Australian coaches probably wouldn't. Um, so uh, big ups to Joey Wright. He, he um, you know, he, he put me on in the NBL and um, 
yeah, signing that first deal was weird. I was just living at home with my parents and it's like, here, you want to come and train with um, CJ Bruton, Ebby Ara, Sam McKinnon. And I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> like I'm out of my league here, but yeah, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah. Um, so it was cool to do it at home as well. Um, but it, it was a bit shaky because the bullets folded that year. And then I signed with uh, the Perth Wildcats the next year as a development player. And it was a little different ink in that deal because I had to move to Perth at 18 years old and I signed a development player contract for two and a half thousand dollars for eight months. Yeah. Not per month, two and a half thousand dollars <laughs> total for the whole eight months. <laughs> so you move across the country for a few thousand dollars. Um it's, 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 that was, you know, 10, 12, 13, 14 years ago. So a lot's changed now, but um, shout out my parents for, you know, taking care of me and, and, and letting me follow my dream. Sure. I, I saw, um, I don't know if you saw, but we uploaded a thing of you playing in state high. <laughs> what the heck? Where did that come from? Huh? <laughs> bunnies had hops, man. Yeah. It was <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it, Hesh. Those clips I think crazy. I did. I think I caught it. Yeah, yeah definitely a different player to the NBL, Chris Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dunks are only worth two, man. Dunks are only That's worth nice. two points. Uh, That's, That's a good answer. Um, for those who don't know, Chris has been around the league for a long time. Obviously, one of the biggest faces of the NBL. Um, you're a 15-year veteran, um, starting with the Bullets as DP, moving out to Perth for a year, like you said, um, and then back to Queensland with Gold Coast Blaze for a few years. Um, and then you made a home for yourself in Melbourne where you became the franchise player. Um, and that, ha that hasn't seemed to stop. Um, you had a 50 piece back in 2014, um, which yeah. is huge. You led the league in scoring that year as well. Um, you had a couple summer league campaigns with the Cavs and the Mavs. Um, you managed to squeeze in an elite level Euro ball in Spain and Italy as well. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, by the way. No, you're good. Keep going. I'm, I'm liking hearing it. I, I like hearing about the 50 piece and leading the league in the scoring. Um, you came back and won an NBL championship in 2017 with the grand finals MVP um, and then stayed loyal to Melbourne um, to take them back to the promised land earlier this year. Um, how does all that make you feel hearing that back? The 15 years is a shock. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I still I still feel young man I kind of feel young at heart but um, you know father time waits for no one but you know I, I feel good um, 15 years championships you know really proud to have represented my country and then to be a part of what uh, you know we just did um, last week so long career but hopefully plenty of, of years left um so yeah I, I mean i guess if you said like when i was 17 or whatever it was you, you're going to play 15 years professionally i would have took that so um i'm hoping for a few more years though for sure it's a hell of a career man and obviously not finished like you said so got a couple more years on your contract if you had to to narrow it down i know this is a, a bit of an impossible task but how, if in like a, a sentence or a, or a simple kind of explanation, how did you remain so successful for so long? Um, just like uh, work, man, like, um, and it evolves over time, right? When, when I was young, I had energy. Um, I had too much energy, so I could stay in the gym. I could, I could get there early. I could leave late. I could go back at night. I could, um, you know, find an outdoor court at 11 p.m. And, and get a workout in and then go and train at eight the next day. Can't do that anymore. So you've got to be smarter, but you still got to get your work in. Um, and it's something I've, I've sort of um, stood by my whole career is that I, I work at a high level and I know what I need to get done going into games to feel prepared. Um, so now, like a lot of it's taking care of your body, you know, lifting, getting what you need in the gym, you know, not lifting crazy weights, but just doing enough to keep my body at a level that I can run off pin downs and, you know, I can chase young guys around and young guys have to chase me around. And um, I've got enough shots to know that, you know, the clips loaded, I'm ready to go when it's game time. Um, so 
I think just just work, man. Um, and you got to love it as well. Like 15 years later, I still, you know, get joy out of standing there and just consistently making shot after shot after shot after shot and seeing how many I can make in a row and can I beat that and, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm in love with the game and it's, it's helped me a lot. For sure. That's cool. It's, it's, it's good to know that you, you realize that evolution, I guess. I think it happens to everyone when you, when you stay in something for long enough. I got a question from like a more of a coaching standpoint. I like asking pros about this type of stuff just to get inside their head and know exactly what they think. But obviously you've played for a lot of different teams, man. And, and throughout you've always been able to shoot. We've seen that, but I think your minutes, your touches, your shot attempts have varied throughout. Like obviously in summer league situations compared to Europe, compared to franchise player at Melbourne, compared to the boomers yep. where you, where you have another role. How have you managed those expectations? Like mentally to know what you're preparing for and, to put your ego aside or, or your abilities. Like, you know, if you've got 35 minutes, I'm sure you can put up 30 pieces in, in the Olympic campaign as well, you know? How do you mentally manage that? And has that gotten easier over time as you've matured? Oh, yeah, it's definitely a, a maturation thing and realising as you get older that really it's about winning and, you know, winning gets you the personal rewards that you you uh you know that you wanted when you were younger when you think oh man if i just go out there and ball and get a 50 piece or a 30 piece like i'm gonna get paid i'm gonna get to play on this team i'm gonna go here i'm gonna go here and um you know don't get me wrong there's a, a certain aspect to that that is true um you know and, and young guys coming up have to combat that it's it's tough but as i've gotten older it's like you know, I got to a stage where I was 10 years into my career and it's like, damn, I haven't, you know, I keep getting knocked out in the semis. I keep losing in the finals or I'm like, mm. what helps you? Um, and what we look for at Melbourne United now is guys that can you help us win? Um, you know, you might play 10 minutes. You might not shoot the ball at all. But if you go out there and you can make an impact on us winning, we want you. It, you know, and, and I think that translates to wherever you are. Um, and being on the boomers definitely helped me with that because last, the, you know, the Olympics, I was waving a towel. I didn't play. It's all good. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm on Australia's best team. You know, I'm waving a towel. It's all good. And then you come back to the NBL and try and kill it. So being able to sort of um, flip your role and adapt to your role without the ego, um, I think has, has been a, a skill of mine that's helped me for sure in my career. Because if I'm there whinging ass is bullshit, man. Fucking Patty shooting all these shots, that's a bullshit. I could shoot them as well. Like, no one wants to care what I've got to say. Shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> you know, like, do your job. Support the best fucking Australian player we've ever had. And, you know, let's go get a medal. And I try and, um, you know, express that to some of the young guys on Melbourne United when we play. It's like, your time will come, but right now there's other guys that have proven more and, you know, they're just in a position on this team that they're going to play more. They're going to get more opportunity. That doesn't mean that you're not a good player and you might think you're better than them, but, you know, you just got to bide your time and contribute to winning. And when that opportunity comes, you got to be ready to take it. Like the worst thing is you're sitting there whinging, oh, ice and bullshit. I could do this. I could do that. You get your opportunity and you haven't been working hard. You haven't been doing the right things. Then you piss it down your leg. So I'm, I'm happy for everyone to be hungry. You got to be hungry and ready to roll. Um, but you got to contribute to winning and support your teammates, you know, and I think that's, that's what sort of helped me adapt to my roles, whether it be here or the Olympics or, or whatever it may be. Sure. Um, you mentioned Melbourne United there uh, a couple of times. You've got two more years on your Melbourne United contract. Um, how do you feel about the upcoming season? Obviously, Landau signed with the Spurs. Um, McCarran signed in Adelaide. Um, but you've signed Della Vadova, who's obviously yeah. improved. Um, what are your thoughts on the upcoming season? Are we going to see back-to-back -back champs? <laughs> I hope so. That's what I'm here for. Um, yeah. But I like, you know, the Delhi signing is a good one. Um, it's going to take him some time to get back into a rhythm, you know, like he's had some injuries and he hasn't played a lot of basketball for pretty much two years now. So, um, you know, preseason will be key, getting some some consistent minutes under under him and into his legs. I think um, he's the type of guy that he'll just figure out a way to be successful and be a winner. Um, 
and that's what we wanted at Melbourne United. So um, excited with him. Um, we got an interesting group, you know, like a lot of veterans now that, um, you know, we want to just mesh and, and play well with each other and play good defensive basketball. And, um, you know, we'll have an import. We've got a young big man from Germany that's coming in that, you know, we need them to have impacts. Joe Luwal Achuil is um, going to be a big piece just a straight out bucket getter last year who's going to step into a big role now that Jock's gone. And um, we're going to need him night in, night out to, to contribute like he has been. Um, but we always feel confident, man. I mean, I, you don't really know until you get out there on the floor with everyone, but we definitely feel comfortable, uh, confident. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I think the fabric of the NBA has changed recently, just from, like I said, a fan standpoint and me, me following it for a while now. I think there's a lot more kind of DP and DP plus one, plus two kind of contracts going around. Um, I think young guys get more of an opportunity. Obviously, that TV deal that the NBL signed is massive, a bit more money in the league. Yeah. All positive signs. How do you kind of feel like you, you, your career spanned over such a long period of time? Teams have folded and collapsed and, you know, the league has struggled at times. How do you feel now with the NBL currently and what's your view on it? I feel good. I think it's in a good place. Um, you know, I wish I was coming into the league now. I think like minimum salaries getting pushed up there. Um, minimum DP salaries um, is a lot higher than it used to be. Two and a half grand. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot higher than that. Um, so if I was a young kid, I'd be I'd be hyped. I'd be I'd be you know, and and it's a great. Uh, I don't want to say launching pad, but you see you see Josh Giddy, you know, like he came out, he balled out for a year. Look at him now. Um, uh, you don't want to be like, oh, if you, you know, you don't want to encourage people to leave our league, but if they're going on to bigger things like the NBA, fuck yeah, I love it. Um, but it's also like, you know, it's not easy to just come in and do what he did and 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 put up big numbers against some some serious players. So if I was a kid coming into the league, I'd be I'd be super excited now and I'd be ready to get to work. Um, so I guess like for someone that's been through a lot of the shit and the, it was going to fold, it's this, I guess it kind of makes me proud to see it where it is um, today because like that's that's what you want, right? You want to leave something with it being in a better place. And, and there's a lot of people that um, have contributed to that. Larry's a big part of it, man. He put his nuts, his, his money on the line for so many years. So it's cool to see that TV deal come in um, and hopefully we just keep going to bigger and better things. Yeah, that, that's dope, man. What about personally for you? Any more any more kind of goals that you want to tick? Summer League? I was not shocked, but I, I would have loved to see you in the Summer League this season, man. I think you, you probably play in your best basketball as, for as long as I'm following you. Um, yeah, Summer League. Uh, um, summer League's interesting, bro. That Summer League ain't for me, you know? Like, <laughs> um, I've done it a couple of times and it's cool. It's a fantastic experience. Um but you have to be very, um, you got to just go out there and try and get buckets and, you know, try it. Guys, like there's hundreds of guys out there, you know, waving their hand, trying to get seen by a team. So um, if I was a bit younger and all that, for sure, but have a crack at it. But a bit of an old man now. So um, summer league game for me. Uh, I just, I just want to try and play as best basketball as I can here for Melbourne United. As I say, I think I've got, Plenty of years left in me, in my career. So two years left with Melbourne United. I'd love to stay longer. We'll see what happens. But if we can just win some championships um, while I'm playing good basketball, man, I'm happy. What about uh, if the Lakers offered you? They're thin right now. I'm in there, bro. I'm yeah, in there, there like swimwear. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a long way away, um, but we have to ask. Um, Paris 2024. Um, are you in or are you out? <laughs> <laughs> if i'm asked i'm in yeah <laughs> i did say this after rio though i was like i'm good one and done olympian there's no way i'll be there in 2020 then the olympics got pushed to 2021 i was like there is not a chance i'm going to be there in 2021 so i don't know man that's kind of how i keep myself motivated to, to keep working and keep going but i don't think i'll be there but if if i'm asked for sure man i'll be in there I'll wear my new necklace for the questions. Nice. What's this one? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> is, it, is it heavy? Yeah, fuck yeah. 
<laughs> that was cool. Incredible. I wouldn't take it off. No, oh, dude. That's sick. Surreal. All right. Um, we'll get into our fan questions. We put these on our story for our followers to ask. Um, Chris, um, a couple interesting ones in here. Uh, yeah. If I if I just say skip, you got to respect my wishes. Of course. <laughs> don't answer anything you don't want to. This first one might be a skip, but I'm hoping it's not a skip. I think it'll be interesting. This is, coincidentally enough, have come from different fans across the board. They don't know each other. But I'm going to read them all out. They all allude mm. to the same thing. You ready? Mm. How many tinnies did you crush? How many frothies did you sink? How many beers did you down? How many cold ones were consumed the night you won France? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's a good question. Um, the best thing was, like, our team, like, the staff, they came prepared, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so we win the game, and they're like, uh, we did whatever we had to do. We get back to the locker room and we've got like 15 minutes until we need to be out on the podium to get these bad boys. Yeah. And I just like, there's just esky, 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 esky packed full of those big boy Asahis. So we took it on ourselves. It's like, let's go, like get as many in as you can uh, before we have to get on this podium. We hadn't eaten. Guys are like eating muesli bars. Like, oh, fuck. I just need to get something in my system. Um, but a number, I, I couldn't put a number on, man. But like we had a good party. We went straight back to the village. And there was people that had like waited, waited out down the bottom of our apartments. You know, there was music playing. Everyone was just ready to roll and, and have a party. And it went on um, throughout the night. It was cool woke up started again um you know you got to leave you have to be out of the village 48 hours after uh your last event so we had 48 hours to go for it man and we went for it um i think this one is asked by a brisbane state high student um did your years at brisbane state high prepare you for the future yeah for sure um at the time, it's like this was the basketball I was playing. I was playing club basketball and I was playing at state high. And um, At the time, I was like locked in. It's like, holy shit, we got a big game against Terrace or we got a big game against Nudgy. Um, you know, like, like that sort of shit. Like when I look back now, I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, that, that was cool. But yeah. at the time, it was, you know, you, you get one crack, you play everyone once. Like you lose one game generally and that's your premiership's done. So um, for sure, like high intensity environments, man, anytime you can be in high pressure, high intensity environments, it, um, it helps you out for the future. Um, but yeah, I love my state high. Um, I love, loved my experience there. Um, yeah. State high, baby. I love it. All right. Uh, what are the chances United have winning the chip next year? Uh, a, a good chance like we always do um, you know we've turned ourselves into a club that what we compete for is championships um, so you know like a Perth they don't, they don't come out every year just to score some points and sell out arenas you know like that that's part of it they make playoffs and then they win championships so we we want to be that club we want to be one of those clubs and you know two chips in four years um it's good but we want more um someone asked and i quote is long hair goulding ever coming back he was a different breed mm -hmm. i just gave myself a quarantine haircut man <laughs> i actually don't know if i could grow the long hair back if i tried um <laughs> Maybe when I'm old and it's like full gray, I'll be like one of those old dudes with like gray hair and a mo like yours. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, maybe when I'm older, man. But it's just it's too easy now to just get the you know get a get it cut. So I'm rolling with this for the moment. For sure, I think this is a popular one. I think this was asked by a lot of different people. Uh, I think a lot of people have the same kind of kind of curiosity. What were the things that made you such a sniper? Uh, kind of like what I touched on before, right? Like work, um, repetition. Um, so I, I don't know whether I had a natural talent 
for shooting. I, I don't know. Um, but you know, when I, when I was younger, what I did was, you know, like to me, basketball is scoring the ball, right? Like probably shows in my defense. <laughs> um, but like, that's just what I wanted to do was score the basketball. And I, and I would go out, you know, when I was a kid, I would stay out on the front driveway. Um, you know, I was Kobe, I was Larry Bird. I was making these shots to, to beat buzzers and, it was, it was all about scoring the basketball for me. And um, yeah, just repetition, repetition. And, I, and like I said, like what genuinely makes me happy and brings me joy and I could stand and do it for hours on hours is standing there shooting the basketball and watching it go in and seeing how many I could make in a row and then trying to beat that and then continually trying to just make shots continually. So I don't know, maybe I'm a little weird that way. People sometimes get bored with it, but there's nothing boring about, you know, letting the ball go and seeing it swish through the net and I can do it for hours on end. So that, that's probably what contributed to that a lot. We'll get into our 10 quick questions. Um, you can use your skip button if you want. <laughs> um, who's, the, who's the funniest teammate on the Boomers? Hey, like low-key, Josh Green was kind of funny. He's childish as hell, but... <laughs> like childish funny you know like making noises like at inappropriate times that sort of shit like <laughs> it's a different kind of funny it's childish funny but yeah. yeah that that amused me nice um i think this one's obvious but favorite memory from the recent stint at the olympics one moment in time uh standing on the podium uh with the bronze medal and, and getting ready to stand up you know, as a group with, with medals on. That's a good one. Um, favorite basketballer of all time? Kobe, RIP. Good choice. Favorite meal? Meal? Yeah. Uh, fried chicken, buffalo chicken, man. Ranch sauce. Okay. Um, favorite place to play in the NBL besides Melbourne? Uh, Perth. Uh, I like Perth, Sydney. When there's like a, when it's packed, packed. I like that's that's a that's a good stadium. Sure. Uh, what was your reaction when Melbourne signed Delhi? Uh, I knew about it because I've been talking with Delhi. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I, I thought you would have known. <laughs> um, who's winning the NBA championship next year? Uh, do I care? Not really. Do I hope <laughs> it's someone with a uh, Brooklyn? Brooklyn. There you go for Patty. Yeah, good answer. Yeah, All right. One piece of advice to young hoopers trying to make them pros: work hard. Like young, this would, this could probably be long, right? Um, junior basketball is tough, man. Like, um. People develop at different times, you know, like I remember I was under 14s. I'm playing against dudes with fucking chest hair and muscles and under, and I'm like this skinny little kid that, you know, I looked like a little girl. Um, like, how am I supposed to compete with that? So like when you're young and you're going through all the things, it might seem like the end of the world if you don't make a team or, or you don't get picked for this state squad or whatever it is, but like just work hard, love the game. If you can stay in love with the game and, and do the right things and keep putting yourself in positions to succeed. Um, you know, like if you're good enough and you've worked hard enough, opportunity will find you. Um, I guess I see so much, and I was the same. Like I was so discouraged by not making junior teams and, you know, not making state teams. And if I finally made one, I didn't play. And it's like, oh man, like, why am I doing this? But you know, things will work out if you love the game and you work hard. And um, yeah, I'm a big believer in that. Yeah. Just on that, I know we're in the 10 quick questions, but I had a couple of people ask me as well, especially young kids that I coach when they knew that I was going to be speaking to you this evening. They want to know like, did you, yeah, did you ever get cut from teams and how did you respond to that? And like, when was it that you decided you felt like, okay, I'm going to try and do this and try and be a pro. I got cut from everything, man. Like literally like club, uh, rep basketball so the one up from club i got cut from that i had to go to another association just to play on saturday nights you know like i moved from there 
didn't make state teams get cut from this one made under i think i made like under 18s top age state team didn't play 20s bottom age didn't make it 20s top age i don't know something just happened and i was fucking cooking like i developed later some people develop early later whatever it is so yeah i mean and then like it doesn't stop depending on the level um you know my first boomers camp see you later go home after three days you, you're not making this okay um development player i was literally out the league i, I had to beg uh, for someone to take you know perth all right yeah come over here for two and a half thousand thank you the blaze gets folded i don't have a job all my teammates are getting signed chris anstey hits me on twitter a dm hey mate do you have a job like would you mind coming down to try out for the, the the tigers or whatever it was i'm like i've got nothing else you know i'm, I'm looking at seek.com.au for jobs um but i stayed true to you know what i believed in which was hard work and loving the game and um you know disappointment happens at every level um it's just how you carry on you deal with it and and, and keep working that's good perspective man i appreciate that um who's the best shooter out of australia ever <laughs> loaded question say it say it Chris we want to hear it uh, <laughs> Paddy Mills hey, hey. Uh, me 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 <laughs> me 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 uh, that's a good I answer I probably beat Drewy in a shootout right now yeah <laughs> there'd be a few guys Hammer might I'd still beat Hammer right now but man there's some there's some people that could shoot right yeah. Drewy, Hammer, Patty, my God, Jingles can stroke it. Yeah. Um, I like my chances, man. Good pick. Nice. Good choice. I love the confidence. Um, we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Um, you've got a dope story. Um, everyone go check out Hoop City if you haven't already. Sure. Um, and yeah, we appreciate it. Good luck with next season. Um, we'll hey, just before I go, man, keep, keep doing what you're doing. The reason I jumped on is because like, you're doing cool stuff for, for, for young hoopers. Like I didn't have any of that. There was no one putting our name out there on MySpace or whatever it was when, <laughs> when we were younger. So like, and it's a big part, like getting footage out there of guys that are playing is a big part of, you know, eventually getting guys to the league. So you're playing a big part of it. I wish people were doing that when I was younger. So keep it up. For sure. I appreciate that. For sure. We'll keep doing what we're doing. All about Sorry. building, building Australian basketball. Um, yeah, sure. we appreciate it. Um, we'll be cheering right, you on next please. season. Catch you later. Thanks, we appreciate it, man. Take care. See you, boys. Thank you guys for joining us again. Um, CG43 was a great episode. Um, uh, very funny guy. Um, that's obviously, my favorite episode for sure. Yeah. My favorite episode, yeah. yeah, facts. He was good. Um, we're keen to hear your guys' feedback on that one. Um, we'll be back with a weekly drop very soon, uh, Tuesday mornings. Um, thank you guys for listening once again. Always remember to subscribe and uh, on all, whatever streaming platform you're listening to right now. Um, that's what keeps us going and what motivates us to make more of these. Um, we appreciate you guys. We'll catch you next time. Appreciate it.